This year, over 600 people were nominated for the unwanted title, Canada's Worst Driver. We selected the lousiest seven, and now, just six motorists remain in the running for our nation's most embarrassing automotive award. Let's meet them now. My name's Daryl, and I nominated my wife, Carlene, as Canada's worst driver. Carlene is so terrified of driving, she can't do it alone. I think I'm done. My name is Mia, and I nominated my sister, Brittany, for Canada's worst driver. Brittany is so clueless about driving. That's a red light. Yellow. She failed her license test 11 times. It's yellow when you stomped on it. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. My name is Jen, and I nominated Darius for Canada's Worst Driver. Darius is so aggressive while driving. You. He's been in a traffic-related fist fight. Yeah, I laid this old man out, I think he was 40. I did get the best punch in. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't continue to fight him because there's too much blood on his face. My name is Sarah, and I nominated my best friend Brandon as Canada's worst driver. Brandon is so emotionally unpredictable while driving. We're just going for a Sunday afternoon drive. I know. <laughs> you never know how his mood may swing. Hurry the f up. My name is Drew, and I nominated Desi to be Canada's worst driver. Desi drives off the road and into things so often. Okay, oh, let's, that's the curb. Let's stay on the road, please. She's covered in scars that were caused by her car crashes. That's your surgery scar? Yeah. Holy. And what is this? It says you can't kill crazy. Oh, yeah, you can. Crazy dies all the time on the road. My name is Jerry, and I nominated Alexis for Canada's Worst Driver. Alexis is so careless about driving. Oh, the 21-year-old has completely destroyed five cars. What's that beeping noise? That's me not in the lane. These six fully licensed drivers are presently being taught and tested here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Whichever one of them ultimately learns the least will eventually be named Canada's worst driver. <laughs> mirrors! They're so versatile. Depending on the, the type of mirror you get, the angle it's at, the cut of the glass, well, you can see all sorts of different things, which is why drivers love mirrors. We use convex mirrors to see who's in our blind spot. We use flat rear view mirrors to see who's directly behind us. But today, I want to talk to you about wing mirrors. Wing mirrors have a lot of excellent applications, and one of them is reversing around corners. And coincidentally, the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to reverse around our annual giant figure eight course. And the vehicle that Canada's worst drivers will be reversing in is our giant 1990 Buick Estate. Before Canada's worst drivers run this course, I'll show them how it's done. The big thing to remember when you're going around a turn is to focus your attention on the inside of the turn. I can see everything I need to see in this mirror. I can see that garbage can coming, I can steer away from it. I can see that I'm not going tight enough, I can steer more. I can look out the front to see that the front end swing is not coming close. And look, I'm headed for that garbage can, right? Right, so no, I'm not. I see it, I steer away from it. Have I looked anywhere other than this mirror? No. no. I'm steering to the left through the first bend, but once I reach the second turn of the figure eight, I'll be steering to the right. Which means I'm gonna be focusing on this mirror. The second half is identical to the first half. I'm on the straightaway, I look straight out the back, and it's over. This course takes me four and a half minutes. Who wants to go first? Alexis won't just be driving herself. 
she'll be reversing all of the other Canada's Worst Driver nominees. Alexis just learned to focus on the inside of the turn, but she isn't doing that. Alexis, do you see me in your mirror? No. You should, because this is where you want to go, right? Alexis is so careless behind the wheel that she once tried to sneak through an intersection and got T-boned with her 18-month-old baby in the car. Wow. Oh, oh, dear. As always, experts are observing every move Canada's worst drivers make. What a mess. She's dragging that. She's not even stopping. Our therapist here at the Driver Rehabilitation Centre is Shamala Kiru. Our legal expert is former highway cop Cam Woolley. Teaching high-speed driving skills is racetrack coach Philippe Laterno. And Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. Alexis is the one that has all the technology in her vehicle at home. So using mirrors is going to probably be a little bit out of her comfort zone. Based on what they witness, these experts help me decide which nominee should graduate and go home at the end of each episode. At the end of our series, they'll help me decide who is Canada's worst driver. Well, she's already let herself get to the outside of the circle, and it's just not going to work. Now, do you see me in your mirror? Yes. Instead of steering towards me, aim for me. Alexis steers randomly back and forth. Steer, steer, steer towards me. I'm steering towards you. Steer towards me, Alexis. You're not steering. Steer I'm steering. towards me. Steer towards me, Alexis. Steer I'm towards steering. me. Like, how much more does he want me to steer? Oh. Alexis is so out of alignment, she can't see the inside of the turn in her mirror. I don't see your eyes in the mirror at all. They're in the mirror! Let's just stop. Let's just stop. Let's just stop there. Stop there. Stop there. I was doing good, and then you stressed me out. No, no. You weren't doing good at all. I'm trying. We're going to do what we call an S-turn. This car wants to be over here. So watch. To make the car shift laterally to the left, you're going to spin the wheel hard to the left. And you're going to go forward with as much space as you've got. Stop. Now you're going to go all the way to the right. All the way to the right. All the way. And stop. And now come straight back. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Stop. And now look, magically, the car is against this wall. We call that an S-turn here at the rehab center. Let's recap the S-turn. Driving forward to the left, then forward to the right, and then reversing straight back will result in your car being repositioned to the left. Left, right, straight back, the car shifts to the left. Okay. At the halfway point, Alexis should shift her focus to the passenger side wing mirror so she can see the inside of turn number two. But she doesn't do that. Stop, stop, stop. You want to get as close to this corner as you can. Man, I'm like as close as I can get. She's not, actually. Oh. <laughs> Alexis sets the bar low. But she did learn. I learned that I gotta focus on the inside rather than the outside. Right. Carleen has a bad history with reversing. I do a lot of damage to my garages. In reversing? Yeah. Took the door off my car, backing up. Just getting to the first turn. I'm in the wrong place. Takes Carleen Four minutes. I'm going to do it. Keep coming back, Carleen. Keep Stop. coming back. OK. Keep coming back, Carleen. You're okay, not moving. OK, coming back. I'm going too fast. You want to be over here, right? Here's the inside of the turn. Over here. I'm going too fast. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Just straighten, straighten up. up. Straighten up. Yeah, straighten up. Carleen does finish the course, but Straighten up, straighten up a little bit. Straighten up. Yeah. She needs instructions the whole way. You guys are just the best people ever. Ah! Desi, Darris, and Brittany all make it around the course perfectly. 
which is something Desi and Darius predicted. See, I told you I was a pro at backing yeah, up. But Brittany predicted total failure. Brandon recently broke his arm, so... Predictions? 15 hits in 10 minutes. F you. Brandon is steering with the aid of a spinner knob. One of the disadvantages of a spinner knob is you can easily input too much steering. Too much steering can result in front end swing. That's no good, that's the front end swing right there. Emotion plays a huge part in so many people's driving. Come on, you piece of In Brandon's driving, I think it plays a bigger role than his steering. Oh, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon does eventually finish, but it's the worst run of the day. And we're done. We're done, we're done, we're done. You okay? Nope. When we come back, we'll see if Canada's worst drivers know where their wheels are on the trough. There was a time when people thought that in the future, all cars would fly through space. Well, that future hasn't exactly happened yet. And until it does, drivers down there on the ground, don't look down. Drivers down there on the ground need to know where their wheels are. Specifically, they need to know that when going around a turn, their rear wheels do not follow their front wheels. In fact, their rear wheels take the turns tighter. And if you're an astute fan of the show, you know that that sentence means it's time for an annual challenge we call The Troll! Ooh, I can see it from here. Here. The Trough is a snaking concrete course that our students must drive the length of without falling off. And Darius says he can do it without receiving a lesson. It's just gonna pop off unless he steers. Oh. Oh. So drivers can know exactly where their wheels are on this course? We've equipped the vehicle with a bird's eye view camera system. You're doing awesome. Just please be quiet, okay. please. But Darius isn't using it. Too <laughs> close, man. Darius understands that he needs to take the corners on this course wide to prevent his rear wheels from falling off on the inside of the turns. You're doing it. And on his third attempt, Darius keeps his front tires high and wide on every turn. Go slow, go slow. And he makes it around every turn without falling off the trough. Woo! Yes, mama! Give me a high five. For that one. Darius has passed every single challenge this season. I think I'm gonna graduate this episode. Before Brandon tries driving on the trough, he wants the lesson about where his wheels will be when rounding a corner. If I turn my front wheels to the right, when my rear wheels reach that exact same spot, Will they be further to the left than the front ones were or further to the right than the front ones were? I, I, I would say farther to the left. No, they're farther to the right. I show Brandon what I mean. I'm coming around this and I'm turning, right? Yeah. When turning right, if my front wheel hits the disc, my rear wheel will miss it to the right. You understand that? Yep. Okay. Time's in. On this course. We got this. Yep. Drivers will get 30 minutes to make as many attempts as they can. Wide turns is your friend. Wide turns. Wide. He's not making a wide turn at all. He's right in the middle of the lane. Which means his front wheels will make it around the turn 
but his rear wheels will veer too far to the right. That's why we take wide turns, because the rear wheels go tighter to the turn. If you want to make this turn, you've got to take it really, really wide, OK? OK. On Brandon's second attempt, he does the polar opposite of a wide turn. Well, that's that's a sharp turn. That's, that's putting your front wheel off. Did you try to take that turn wide or tight? Tight. Why would you do that when we just discussed that your rear wheels take the turn tighter than your front? He just had the lesson. I, uh... That's a wide turn. That's a wide turn. That's crazy fast, but that's a wide turn. Talk yourself through it as you're going. Yep, going straight. Brandon's going straight over the edge. I can't do this. Yeah, you can. No, I can't. Totally can. No, Why I not? Can't. No, yes. Why not? Come here. I can't process the information. So, to recap, he should be far to the left for this first right turn. And he's doing it, but he's coming right off. He's over. He's got a camera, he's got mirrors, he's not using either. Brandon's half hour time limit is over. I'm done. What's worse than failing the challenge is that Brandon has failed to learn the lesson. I can't tell you what I learned. I can't tell you all anything about the challenge. I can't tell you nothing. Will Desi learn the lesson? My front tire's all over it, yeah? Yeah. My rear tire doesn't get it, OK? Yeah. On her first attempt, Desi's front end makes it around the turn, but oh. not her rear. And that's what we're talking about, your right rear wheel takes the turn sharper. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. This is what we're talking about. If she's too tight, which she is, her rear wheel falls off. A really broken record. How many cars have you killed over the course of your driving life? At least 20. Desi never does pass, but she has learned the lesson. What's the lesson? Go wide. Are we gonna die? When we come back. Oh, oh. Are we gonna die? Are we gonna die? The rest of Canada's worst drivers take their turn on the trough. Canada's worst drivers are learning that their rear wheels take turns sharper than their front wheels. On an annual course we call the trough. That's why we take wide turns, because the rear wheels go tighter to the turn. Alexis wants my lesson before attempting the challenge. Front wheel hits the disc, ka-bang, back wheel misses the disc. And it's just that simple. That's what we're talking about. OK. Alexis is rushing. No. And she isn't using her bird's eye view camera screen. Hold on. Ah! This is stupid. This is stupid. Hold on. Canada's worst driver. Might be her. Take your time. See, now, that just makes no sense at all. Like, that's just hoping. That's not driving. This is so stupid. What's stupid is the way Alexis is dismissive of every challenge that she can't pass. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Not again. In the same spot. What are you going to do differently this time? I'm going to try to take my time. I'm just getting Yes, fun. yes, I'm going to cut you off right there. Take your time. This will be the final attempt for Alexis. Get this. If I get this on this last one, I'm going to my head. Yes! Yes, yes! We got a winner, ladies and gentlemen. We got a winner. We got a winner. Yeah. Yes! 
Alexis, learn the lesson. I thought the challenge was stupid at first. I was like, this is so dumb. Like, when am I going to have to use this? But like the lesson behind the stupid course is valuable. Brittany thinks her rear wheels follow the exact same path as her front wheels, but. I ride the curb all the time when I leave a parking lot. With your front wheels? With my back. So that tells you that your back wheels don't follow the same line as your front wheels. OK. Bang, there I'd run over it. Watch, does the rear wheels run over it? Not even close. Not even close. Brittany is not even close to knowing what to do with this information. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What just happened? The back wheels took the turn tighter is what happened. Back wheels turn tighter, back wheels turn tighter, OK. Not only is Brittany driving confused, she's driving blind. Oh! This lesson has explained a lot to Brittany. Like, this is the first time it's like... It's an eye-opener when you don't yeah. know it. Yeah. Like, and I always wondered, like, I can't park against the curb. You know what I mean? Like, when you pull into the curb, why isn't my back end in with my front end? Like, when you pull in like Oh, that, if you were on an angle, yeah. you'd be confused as how you wound yeah. up on an angle. Yeah. Sometimes it would go in perfectly, and other times it wouldn't. So I just figured my wheel alignment was out. Is that what you figured? Yeah, so then I take it to Hyundai in Victoria, get my wheel alignment done, and then be done with it. I kind of want to be in your brain for like a day. <laughs> and just like swim around in there like, what the hell's going on in here? Carly has too many physical issues to risk falling off the trough. But she still needs this lesson. Have you ever sideswiped a, a pole in a, in a parking garage? I might have. I might have done that on numerous occasions. Carlene's version of the lesson, there's your non-bone rattling trough, will still show her that when turning, rear wheels take a tighter line than front wheels. That's that lesson. Yeah. Another one in the can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel so ashamed. Mm. When we come back, green bread. We learn how well Canada's worst drivers can do. Red green, no, no. A shoulder check. Everything's better with kung fu sounds. <laughs> Canada's worst drivers don't check their blind spots before changing lanes. You should look where you're going first. Right? I did look. They just hope that no one's beside them. <laughs> and two of them don't even know what their blind spot is. That's so crazy. Alexis says she doesn't do shoulder checks because her car has a blind spot indicator. Blind spot indicators. This, this little orange light in my wing mirror right here. Blind spot indicators are an extremely effective piece of technology when it comes to letting you know that a car is beside you and slightly behind you. But even if your blind spot indicator doesn't go off, you shouldn't just change lanes without doing a shoulder check to see who's back there because... The fastest I've ever gone, 210. I'm doing 150. I've gone like 200 in my Audi. If there's a speed freak whipping up to pass you at some ungodly speed, well, you're, uh, your blind spot indicator won't go off until you're basically turning right into him. Here to explain what I mean is our high-speed expert, Philippe Letourneau. Do you know what a blind spot is? No, I do not. The blind spot is an area of space beside and slightly behind a driver that cannot be seen in the mirrors and it's large enough to fit a car in. So check your mirrors? OK, is there something in your mirror? No. No, huh? No. Turn around. There's a car right there. There's a car right there. And if you start to do your lane change, what's going to happen? I'm going to run into the car. Brittany never checks her blind spot before changing lanes. 
Yes, but the way that I drive, like for instance on the highway, I go way past everybody, so I don't have anybody beside me on the left or the right. Okay, what if someone comes at 180? I have no idea. Do you see something in your blind spot now? No. Nope. Do you see something in your mirror? Um, not in the mirror, no. no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oops. Yeah. We're just going to switch seat. Okay. I'm going to just show you how to do a proper shoulder check. Okay. First, though, put your right foot underneath the brake pedal. Philippe is showing everyone how to get properly seated. And I move the seat forward until I find a slight bend, slight bend, slight bend in the knee. If Philippe were to brake with a straight leg... And I hit, shockwave goes through the car. It will also right through go through your leg, and something could snap. Ankle, knee, worse, it could be a hip injury. Next... I'm going to adjust the upper part of the body, and to measure the longest distance to the seat, this time I'm going to put my wrist at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock position, OK? What did you learn as far as end position on the wheel? They showed me 10 and 2. 10 and 2. That 10 and 2 technique was good long time ago when steering wheel were much bigger. Now the steerings are much smaller mm -hmm. and they have power assist. But I want you to understand the logic behind this. If I go 10-2 mm -hmm. and I have to avoid something really fast, my arm's locked now, right? Mm. That's about 120 degree of steering input. Mm -hmm. Lower your hands at 9 and 3 and all of a sudden you have 180 degree of steering input. And that 60 degree difference mm -hmm. could be the difference between avoiding something or hitting something. To not hit the person in your blind spot, just turn your head. You need to do a shoulder check. All I do is turn my head. You keep your shoulder in the back of the seat, and all you have to do is turn your head. If I go like this, mm -hmm. the odds are I might steer at the same time. This way, if something happens in front of the car, like brake legs, for example. Some, somebody jumps on the brake. Well, I'll see it with my peripheral vision, then I'll be able to look. Oh, I see. OK, that makes sense. Because like, you can still, yeah. oh. If I go like this, now do I see anything there? No. It's not complicated. <laughs> it's a shoulder check. And doing one every single time you change lanes could save a motorcyclist's life. For the shoulder check challenge, Drivers will come down this laneway at 70 kilometers an hour. Once they pass these two markers, they must look back using a shoulder check to see the colored squares on the far side of the pillars. Whichever side has a green square is the side drivers must exit on. I'll show you how it's done. In our brand new Mustang, which once again must be going 70 kilometers an hour. One of their issues is actually going 70. They need to go exactly there, 70. And I look, that one's red, that one's green, and I've got plenty of time to make that swerve. It's tight, but that's driving on the highway. It's always tight. Can Canada's worst drivers successfully shoulder check and change lanes? We're about to find out. Speeder Alexis never thinks about what she has to do before doing it. So I'm just going to go. OK. Here's Alexis. I kind of worry that she's going to speed and wreck. How long your speed? I'm going 70. I'm going 80. I'm going right. That's, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about. She looks to the right, and the wheel goes with her. Alexis only checked on her right side. And she only hit on her right side. And you know why? Because I did this. Uh... A proper shoulder check is just turning your head. This is different than this. Yeah. Desi was recently the passenger in a car that had to do an emergency lane change because a barbecue fell off the back of the truck that was in front of us. A barbecue? Yeah, a barbecue. It was bad. Holy <laughs> hate this car so much. OK, I'm doing 70, I'm doing 70. And 
red, green, oh, oh, right off. Oh, I'm so mad. Desi called out green, but she didn't actually see it. I can't turn my neck enough it's to look. To I can't see. And that's because of car crash injuries? Yeah. It doesn't doesn't go any further. When we come back. Red, green. The rest of Canada's worst drivers do our shoulder check challenge. Canada's worst drivers have learned how to see what's in their blind spot by doing a shoulder check. Here we go. Now, Red. Oh. Damn it. they're being tested on that skill. I did this. Uh. Darris came to rehab because of a deal he made with his mother. If he graduates, she'll pay his car insurance. But now? I'm not buying his insurance anymore anyway. Whether he passes or fails, Whoa, it, that's up to him to shifting buy. Shifting sands of life. Is that right? That's right. So you lured him here, and now whoosh, there goes the insurance anyways. Absolutely. Were you aware of that? No, not at all. Oh, 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 I'll leave you two to discuss that amongst yourselves. You're buying me insurance, Mom. <laughs> She's had a habit of enabling him, and I think uh, for her to be assertive in that way is exactly what he needs. Let's just focus on the challenge. We'll worry about the insurance after. You don't even have a car to insure, so do, don't do, even do, worry do. about it. Okay, breathe first. Okay. Have you ever changed lanes without checking your blind spot and nearly sideswiped someone? Multiple times. Have you ever actually sideswiped someone or hit someone? Uh, only once caught on camera and that I know of. Oh, you captured that image on your own dash cam or on someone else's? Someone else captured me. And then they forwarded that to the cops and you got a giant ticket? Incorrect. What does that cost you? 550 for uh 550 I believe it was. Do you mean that cost you $550 or that cost your mother $550? It cost her $550 and we hired a lawyer for it. Here's Darius. Can he hold it together? Let's hope. Keep going. Red, green. Good job. Darius believes he should graduate because rehab has cured his road rage. I don't have rage issues that you can Oh, be yes, dealt he with. does. No. Absolutely. I beg to differ. Brittany never shoulder checks when changing lanes, and she sideswiped other drivers because of it. A few times. A few times? Yeah. And even after doing it a few times, you never thought I should look over my shoulder? You, you, you dazzle me. I, I, I'm amazed by that. How do you get a license when you don't have a concept of a shoulder check? How many times have you sideswiped somebody while changing lanes? Probably 10. 10? 10, 15. What? Yeah. Whether I clip my back end or I clip their front end, you know, or completely sideswipe them or near misses. Really? Yeah. So when you say you've had 20 to 30 accidents, are you including those 10 or 15? No. Mm -hmm. 20 or 30 accidents is rollovers and write-offs mm -hmm. and violent crashes. Yeah. Sideswiping someone on the highway. I didn't even include that. That doesn't count as an accident to you. Mm -mm. Wow. She thinks it's normal. I thought that everybody had accidents and just didn't say anything. Really, you thought that was just part of everybody's normal life, that they drive to work, sideswipe someone while changing lanes, and then just never mention it? Yes. How is it humanly possible to sideswipe 10 or 15 people on the highway 
and not be concerned for your own safety and the safety of others. I hope she gets this. Here comes Brittany. Red, green. And that right there is why you have to hold your hands still when you shoulder check. You can't do this or motorcyclists die. That wasn't too bad at all, Mia. We did it. Gold yeah. star. Gold star. Gold star? She left the lane during the shoulder check. I'm pretty positive I'm not Canada's worst driver because I'm very teachable. Carly is freaking out about having to drive 70 kilometers an hour. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Good. You're in a quarter. I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to me. I'm not quitting. I'm so scary. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Can she do a good shoulder check at 70 kilometers an hour? Let's see. No, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go right back to the beginning right away. You're going to get rear-ended if you do that in an emergency situation. I know. Carlene slowed down all the way to 25 kilometers an hour before doing her shoulder check. <laughs> Why the tears, Carlene? You're in a perfectly safe environment doing a uh, driving maneuver that is perfectly safe. Why I can't the tears? tell you why. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just freaking me out. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Give yourself a little slap in the face. Remind yourself that you're in a good, safe, healthy environment, and you're lucky to be here. OK. She should be relishing this opportunity instead of burrowing down into her emotional distress. If she can't even attempt this, she probably should actually quit driving. Here's Caroline, 70 k an hour on the shoulder check. No, no! Oh, 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 I know I braked again. I know. Oh, I know, I know. I did it faster. Yeah, you actually went 70. Yeah. Turn the car off. Okay. So, I don't <laughs> Hit remember. That button, let go of the wheel and turn the car off. Okay. You're gonna. Oh, I can't get it. You do it. You no, know, you do it. You do it. Okay. You, oh, you control right. your own body. Me. Come on. Don't ridicule me, please. Don't. Ridicule me. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm trying to enjoy the moment. I, I'm sorry. I'm not that person that yells like that. OK. And let's be honest, I was ridiculing you. Because it's silly that you react like this. I know it is. I hate it. Conquering her fear of driving should get a little bit easier every day. But Carlene has decided that it's going to get harder. I am doing a lot of hard work here, and I'm not giving up. And I know it's going to get harder. I know this. But please, stop just telling me to get over it. Brandon used to drive with his left foot underneath the brake pedal. Underneath this! I would have it under the brake like this position. Underneath the brake? Underneath. So when you braked, did you sometimes not brake because your foot was there? Mm-hmm. Really? Really. And that was after having 20 hours of professional in-car training. You did 20 hours, hours. of in-car training, and the guy never looked at your feet? The only thing he would look at is the mirrors or the speedometer. Maybe the reason Brandon's driving instructor fixated on his speedometer was because Brandon was always speeding. Green, red. Ah. Are you doing 70? Brandon was doing 90.
Yeah, I, I didn't pass, but, no. but I, I, I know what I did wrong. When we come back. I came here to become a better driver. Darris makes his plea to graduate. Do you want to graduate this episode? I feel I deserve to, yes. None of the Canada's Worst Driver nominees for this 14th season are looking like they're going to graduate anytime soon. Oh! Oh! We fell at the same spot as the last time. Except for Darris. Red, green. Who once again this episode passed every challenge. Woo! Yes, Mama! Give me a high five for that one. Woo! But... Darius's mother does not want him to graduate yet because she feels that back home, he'll simply exhibit the same aggressive road rage driving style that got him here in the first place. Why are you looking at me like that, you head? I don't think you can repair something that is seriously wrong in just a few days. Now it's time for me and our experts to speak with all the bad drivers, starting with the man himself, who is hoping to graduate by feeding us the lines that he thinks we want to hear. So I came here to become a better driver. No, no, you came here so you get insurance money from your mother. You told us that. Well, that as well, but the main goal was to become a better driver. Mm. Okay. You, 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 you know your story changes from time to time, right? That's what I started out with. What is your insurance? How much money are you looking at per, per year? Um, around 650 per month. Per month? Yes. So leaving here, if, if you don't get money from your mother, you're not gonna be driving for a long time. Correct. Because you're unemployed right now, right? Correct. Do you want to graduate this episode? I want to graduate this episode. And you feel like you deserve to? I feel I deserve to, yes. Does anyone else want to graduate? No. 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 I don't feel ready to graduate even a little bit. I don't think graduating would allow me to do what my goal is. Do you want to graduate this episode? I want to, but I, I don't want to in the same hand. Okay. Right? I really, I want to learn more and I want to be a better driver and I want to be safer on the roads. I want to learn different techniques so I don't sideswipe people, so I don't hit the deer on the side of the road where I can avoid and swerve and, you know, learn to back up successfully and know where my wheels are and be able to do that trough like a tramp. Like a tramp? Like a, a champ. <laughs> <laughs> I guess instead of having like, you know, a full-blown deliberation and coming up with a short list of who should graduate, we just need to discuss one thing. Does Darius indeed graduate? Or does he stick around here to learn more? This episode, just like last episode, only one person said that they want to graduate, and that, of course, Darius, is you. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yep. So, will you get to graduate and go home this episode? Well, the experts and I chatted about it, and we thought, no, no, not a chance. You need to stick around here and show us that your road rage is under control before we can conceivably let you back on the road. So just wouldn't be right in terms of public safety. Nice hoodie, though. Thanks. Will anyone graduate next episode? I don't know. I don't even know which one of these six people is Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. The nominees who drive distracted are subjected to our annual demonstration on why they should not do that. I 
understand that distracted driving is not right. But you do it anyways. But I do it anyways. Everyone gets a pleasant lesson with Tim. See, I always thought that the solid lines meant that you can pass. No, absolutely not. And the Swerve and Avoid Challenge has lots of swerving, oh. but not so much avoiding. Oh. Oh, oh. I think I made it through the opening. What? That wasn't too bad at all, Mia. We did it, gold star. Gold star.